Well, hello, Marianne. Hi, Gordon. Um, I think what we want to do now is uh, we talked about Power Nine. We, we did a nice intro on that. We kind of describes what that is. Live, live a longer, healthier life by applying these principles inspired by the people who've lived the longest. Um, centurions in um, the, the, the five places in the world where they lived the longest, uh, that Dan Buechner had done the, uh, the research and figured it out. And the number one, it's not number one in se sequential, it just happens to be first on our list, is move naturally. And um, when I teach a purpose workshop, uh, my number one thing that, that drives me to purpose is moving naturally. Mm -hmm. So, what's your take on moving naturally? Tell, tell us Mary Ann's thoughts. Well, I love, I loved when he framed it as move naturally because a lot of people I know have an allergic reaction to the exercise word. Yeah. <laughs> the E word. Oh, yeah. Because it implies all kinds of stuff that they really don't want to get involved with. Sweating, you know, special clothes, gym membership. Um, having to run or it doesn't count, etc. And the thing that Dan found, and I really appreciated his revealing this in the book, is these places where people live longer move naturally as um, an inherent part of their life and living. Mm -hmm. So they walk to market, they garden, um, they visit their friends by walking there, they live in communities that are walkable, mm -hmm. And so if we can take, it's kind of like we've talked a lot about diet, not diet, but noticing what foods are truly nourishing. This is the analogy, or the analogous um, form of that in the realm of exercise, which is simply move your body. Mm -hmm. And in our culture now, where most people are sitting behind a desk, Right. And not even noticing. I mean, there's a zombie effect that happens, truly. There is. Sitting in front of their laptop with the screen in front of them for hours and hours. And hours, hours and hours. Yeah. And so many, in the, my primary care clinic, so many of the musculoskeletal problems that I would see are related specifically to that. Mm -hmm. Everything from carpal tunnel to neck issues to low back issues. You know, and so just getting up if that is your work and you're not going to change that because that's what you have to do for a living then at least every 20 minutes stretch get up move stand up you know every hour get up do some squats mm -hmm. stand behind your chair lift your leg in every which direction move your body make sure your body is able to move and then if you're not at work Notice the choices you can make to help you to move naturally. You do not have to find the closest parking spot. Like taking the elevator instead of the stairs. Etc. Mm -hmm. You know, now if it's pouring rain, I'll give you a break. <laughs> but, <laughs> but really, think of how good you can feel. Oh. Just by, sometimes uh, my husband and I will purposely park relative to a restaurant such that we can walk from the restaurant to our car because we know it's going to feel good after that. Right. Yeah, I think small changes too. You know, um, people come to me a lot. I've known a lot of people know me as Coach Gordon. I say, Coach, what can I do? How can I get started? And I said, Well, do you walk? And they're like, <laughs> Well, not really. I said, Well, start there. You know, <laughs> get a watch, uh -huh. a simple step count watch. Uh -huh. Get a baseline, figure out what your baseline step count is. Is it 5,000? Is it 6,000? And then slowly but surely increase it to where you can get to eight or 10,000 steps. See how you feel after you do that, and then go from there. So it, it is that simple. Yes. You know, those simple movements. And, and uh, you know, you go back to uh, cavemen and Neanderthals, and, and, and that they had to move naturally to survive. Mm -hmm. What they did every day was what kept them healthy and alive. So I think we've gotten away from that. Uh, well, that's probably as just you a said. good thing. Yeah. <laughs> they as were running a lot, I guess. They were probably <laughs> running away from things so they didn't die. You know, <laughs> uh, fight or flight syndrome, I'm sure. But you know, I think I think that um, it's got kind of almost a, mo a movement of getting back to basics of, you know, 
what what can you do? And even in some of the workout regimes, I'm a big workout person, so I move unnat unnaturally a lot. Uh, <laughs> I was not going to say that, but <laughs> it depends on if you're talking about running. Running running is is moving naturally, just a little bit faster. So that's that's a little in the realm. But when you start picking up weights and you start doing body weight exercises and things like that, that is not. It is not for everyone and is not a good place for some people to start. Mm -hmm. um, it is, some people just love, I love what it does to me and how it makes me feel when I've had a good workout. It's mm -hmm. like adrenaline and dopamine and all of those things are just, you know, synapsing and it, it's great. But I know that it's not for everyone and, and you know, finding, once again, here's that word that I always come back to is what's your strategy? Mm -hmm. How do you find your way to move naturally? And you know, one of the things that I um, love about taking the conversation into noticing what is true for you as a person is sarcopenia, which just means muscle wasting, mm -hmm. is a predominant problem for people as they age. Mm -hmm. It will happen because our hormones change. And if you don't move your body, all parts of your body, in some manner, you will lose muscle. Mm -hmm. And falls and fractures increase drastically and they are the beginning slide into a painful death mm. for many older people. Right. And so in these communities where uh, friends gather, they walk together, they walk to one another's house, they walk to the market, they don't stop doing that when they get older. Right. Exactly. And so for us to continue to engage in movement that does work all parts of our body. So maybe not lifting weights, but you need to be capable of lifting your grocery bag. Mm. You, you need to. You know, and one of the tests that I do with older people just to gauge their likelihood of falling is there are balance tests, but also just say, I want you to stand up from the chair without using your hands. Your hands. Right. Can they do that or not? Yeah. And if not, they're going to need to build some core muscles, and that might mean some literally focused exercises to help them get started. But then you think about functional capacity, mm -hmm. really. That's how I think as a physician is, what is the functional capacity that they're losing that will lead to further outcomes that are bad? Mm. Yeah, um, my wife works in a, a nursing facility. Mm. Um, and a lot of those folks are in the bed and they, there's, there's not a lot they can do about it. Um, but the, it's the end result of what they didn't do. Earlier. Yes. You know, of things that they could have made changes, but they didn't choose to, mm -hmm. or they, some of them were unable to. It's just d depending on the person. But um, there's there's so many things that you can do that, like, you know, yoga simply is uh, good for everyone. Yes, it is. And some people mm -hmm. think, well, it's it's kind of kind of hokey or it's you know it's kind of oh, no. but it's I think I think it does everyone benefit and mm -hmm. I, I'm a I'm a big fan of, I do probably do it about five or six days a week mm -hmm. um, Julie and I both do and I think it's one of the things that's kept me mobile enough as I've tried to be competitive mm -hmm. um, and if I didn't have that in my repertoire I don't know where I would be mm -hmm. I don't think I would be where I am now. yes well moving naturally and if you talk about exercise, you talk about the, a variety of different things. There's strength building, mm -hmm. there's stamina, cardio, mm -hmm. and there's flexibility. And so moving naturally will actually do all of those things, mm -hmm. but we don't notice. So if someone needs a boost in one direction or another, in our society as it is, which is more fragmented and more computer oriented and sitting at a desk oriented, sometimes it does require paying attention to the piece that is missing mm. that we have to on purpose do. Mm -hmm. And yoga, I agree with you, is a, is a catch-all. And not all yogas are the same. They're, there's all the way from oh. restorative you know, to Bikrams and everything in between. And so, uh, but yoga really does work all of those components. Strength, stamina, mm -hmm. actually, and flexibility, definitely. Yeah. And so I, I also, I agree with you. Yeah, that's a... Uh... I think that's a great overview of, of what Mary and I, Mary Ann and I think about moving naturally. So that's a, once again, here we are a good start. So thank you again, Mary Ann.